Hey, this is James from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. You're welcome to watching Trucker Josh Vlogs with Diesel. Good morning, friends and frenemies. How's it going? Oh, we got it. We got a leak. We got a leak. Oh, that needs a little spit shine. One second. One second. Hold on, guys. I'm hooking up to the step deck. I gotta go and uh, pick something up in Ross or Manitoba and bring it to. Uh, one second pick it up in Rosser and uh, bring it into Winnipeg and then come back here, pick up a trailer, a roll tight, bring it into Bozizer. Come here, you. Why are you, why are you leaking air? That should do it. Right, let's try that. Oh, it's still leaking. I'm gonna have to do some convincing. One second, one second. First thing in the morning, you're messing with me. What's going on here? What's going on? Need a little bit more spit? I know it's a little gross, but it works. I don't know why. It does. I'll right, we'll try that. One sec. Told you. <laughs> nice. Okay, here we go. This is the trailer. This is gonna be my friend for the morning. Gotta get these rocks off of there. Why are there rocks on the deck? Don't want those bouncing off and going through someone's windshield. Oh, they wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't like me very much. And I prefer it when people like me. I really do. It makes life so much easier when people like you. I don't want you either, little buddy. There you go. Go down there with your friends. Ah, I thought I saw another one over here. I did. And one up there, too. What's all this mud from? Okay. There's a couple up here. Let's get those big ones out of here. Oop. That's where you belong. Okay. Oh, I missed one. How did I miss these? Of rocks. Okay, let's go pick up our freight. I wanted to be on the road already, but here we are trucking. That's how it goes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna kick these tires here. Did I kick these on the way past? I don't remember, so I'm gonna kick them again. I kick them with my steel toes like that just to make sure that uh, they're filled with air. And not just any air, compressed air premium compressed air don't want any flats because if the inside tire is flat the outside tire will hold it up right and just by looking at it you can't tell got to go there and kick it or hit it with a hammer or something or a tire whacker singer just to make sure that it has air in it headed westbound on the south perimeter around Winnipeg and uh, everybody seems to be a little bit a little bit calmer than usual on the highway. I did already almost witness one rear end at the last traffic light. People aren't watching ahead of them and when the light turns red, traffic in front stops for the red light, right? People do that. Uh, the people behind them weren't paying attention and the people behind them weren't paying attention. The people behind them weren't paying attention and by that point you can't even see that there's people stopping at the front of this whole line and then suddenly, one after another, they'll slam on the brakes. One, two, three, four, and they just about pile up into each other. But nobody hit anybody. So there's nothing to report, but it was close. <laughs> All it takes is one person not paying attention, and then everybody behind them is just assuming they're paying attention, right? Never assume. 
or if you are going to assume, just assume nobody knows what they're doing on the road. That's what I do. And I still get close calls every now and then. Even when you expect everyone to do the dumbest thing they could possibly do, it still surprises you when they actually do it. Look at this oversized load up here. That is a huge front end loader. But at least they have it on a truck running down the perimeter in rush hour. Most days, this is like a Winnipeg thing. Most days, these tractors, they just drive down the highway in the lane at, you know, whatever their top speed is, 30 mile an hour or 25 mile an hour, whatever it is. And they fly, they, they drive down the highway, traffic coming up behind them in rush hour at like 65 mile an hour, 100 kilometers an hour. And they're just in the lane, just 30 mile an hour. Almost every day you see that. It's nice to see them actually transporting it properly on a trailer, you know, so that they can keep up with traffic. Because that's usually where the accidents happen, when people aren't expecting a slow moving vehicle and they're not paying attention and then bad things happen. But for some reason in Winnipeg, the front end loaders, especially in wintertime when they're clearing snow and stuff, to get from here to like over the river, I guess the only way to get over the river or the quickest way for them is just to go on the highway. And they, they won't drive on the shoulder. They'll drive right in the lane, which is dangerous in my opinion. I don't know, what do you guys think? I haven't seen that anywhere else but here in Winnipeg. It's a Winnipeg thing. <coughs> so that last load was pretty simple. It was like six skids, whatever. Just brought them into Winnipeg. I'm hooked up to 547 now. This one's going to Bozizer. Now, once I have my own truck running here, uh, beginning of June, I won't be switching trailers every day like this and doing multiple loads. I'll uh, be hooked onto a trailer and doing regional, which is, you know, it could be, it, it's sort of flexible. I don't know where they need me to go as a regional driver, but we'll find out as we go. It's not going to be super long haul. I'm not going to be gone for weeks at a time. I'm joining their regional fleet, so we'll, we'll see. I should be home on the weekends, but... Uh, you know, if I need the money and need to work, I can always work through the weekend. But it'll be back to more of the old school kind of Trucker Josh vlogs on the highway. Diesel will be with me again every day. And uh, I'll be able to show you the life of an owner operator here at Keystone. We are trying to attract owner operators to come and work here. So I figure this is a great way to show you from an owner operator's perspective what life will be like here. So I bought a 2008 Kenworth W900 flat top. 244 inch wheelbase. I'm gonna save the rest of all of the uh, reveal for when I actually get the truck. Um, I'm not too sure when the possession date's going to be yet, but it'll be next week sometime. And as soon as I have it, I gotta bring it over here to our shop. They gotta get the right decals on it. Get it licensed, get plates on it, get it registered, get the IFTA stickers, all that stuff working. And then it'll be coming home to my shop. What a day it will be. The truck I've wanted since I was eight years old. Finally coming home with me. So to say I'm excited is an understatement. Very excited. And uh, I think I'll have a very good position. I'll have the same dispatchers, the same uh, load gods that I'm working with, except just instead of, uh, you know, doing city work and being home every night, I'll have my sleeper behind me on the Kenworth, and uh, we're doing overnights all the time. Uh, I'm not too sure yet exactly how many nights I'll be gone at a time. I know some of you have asked that already. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out as we go. Flying by the seat of my pants just a little bit here. No idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I bought trucks before, uh, but this one's different. The one Volvo I at least threw the company here, so the paperwork was very minimal. Well, there was all the paperwork there that had to be there, but it was done through work here, so I didn't have to go find financing on myself on my own. This Kenworth, I had to go find find the financing on my on my own. Uh, the Freightliner, the first truck that I bought, we bought off uh, my cousin's dad, and. Uh, that was fifteen thousand dollars back then this truck is a little bit more the market is a little spicy right now for buyers it's uh you pay a little bit more for trucks than you used to 
But this truck has sentimental value to me as well. It had uh, more value to me than the next person, probably. This was the a specific truck that I was looking for. Uh, the exact one. Uh, almost down to a T. The only difference, we can talk about this more later once I actually have the truck, but the only difference, the only thing I compromised on was the engine. I wanted a Cat C15 single turbo engine. This has a Cummins ISX in it. Uh, but it's pushing almost 700 horsepower. <laughs> it's a beast. I think it's got like 690 horsepower. He showed me the dyno sheets and everything. This thing is a monster. So I'm like, that's okay. Plus Cummins are being manufactured. They're a lot more popular than cat engines nowadays. So I figure it'll probably be easier to get parts and stuff. I don't know. The engine wasn't a deal breaker for me. It was just, I was kind of hoping for a cat, but you know, 700 horsepower Cummins, I'll take it too. That's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, I know some guys that used to run with him and they say like pulling 80,000 pounds up the hills, uh, they'd be like, you know, slowing down, slowing down, going up the hill and he'd just be walking away from them, picking up speed. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll get all the details and everything on the engine for you yet. Once we get it, I'll go over everything in detail with you. I'm very excited about it. Very, very excited. This is, uh, is going to be a big day. Big moment for me. And Britt is completely on board with it too. I, I talked with her about it before I even started considering it. Uh, she's on board uh, as long as I'm on regional. I can't be gone for weeks at a time, and I don't want to be. We're trying. We're starting a family, and we got that process started now. So I want to be home as much as I can. While at the same time, uh, uh, sort of living my dream as well. Like, my dream is to be a dad, have a good family, have a Kenworth W900, take my kids with me trucking, take my wife with me trucking sometimes. That's, that's you know, a, a piece of the dream. So we're, uh, we're shooting for it now. I'm going for it. I dove in. I don't want to get to the end of my life one day and uh, regret not giving it a good shot so the wife's on board i'm definitely on board it's gonna be uh an adventure we still got our savings going on for our house we're gonna build a house within five years or so or in about five years around 2027 that's all still in the works everything is just everything is uh rolling along the tracks here all we got to do is just keep her on the tracks right and make sure she doesn't derail there somewhere for now, I got this trailer behind me. I got a little bit of time yet before I have to leave, and uh, we're gonna bring this out to Bozager, and that'll be it for today. This load is taking me north of Bozager, a little northeast of Winnipeg, very close to cottage country. I love this area. Everything's slowly starting to turn green, though. You can see it on these trees off to the left here already. We're getting there, just coming up after this fly pole. Look at that. Oh, I wish that this time of year wasn't so quick. You know, everything's gonna turn green. We're gonna go to sleep, wake up, and there'll be snow on the ground. I saw a video from Norway the other day, and they already had like flowers and green stuff everywhere. I thought Norway is supposed to be like as cold as here, if not colder. Why do they get nice weather already? <laughs> well, I got about 15 minutes to my customer. Hopefully we can unload this quick. And that'll be the only things I'm doing today. I'm not sure what tomorrow has planned yet, but tomorrow is Friday. Of course, this delivery is down a gravel road. <laughs> I just washed the truck yesterday. Man, when is it, was it dirty? When I did those loads the other day, we had to drive down those mud roads. Truck got so dirty. So I spent like an hour or more cleaning it off yesterday. Looks like I'm gonna be washing the truck again today. What can you do, right? You gotta, you gotta get her done. We got some mud coming up over here. Yeah, I can't avoid it all. I'm just gonna have to wash it again today. Uh, I try to keep it clean, you know? Oops. Yeah, you don't want to slow down too much here. It's going to get a little soft.
clean truck. No, I'm just gonna send it. It's too late. It's too late. She's dirty. I was trying to go slower, but I can't go too slow. I don't want to sink in. Oh man. Just my luck. Oh well. Good thing I got that nice pressure washer. Thank you. You know who you are. It was actually a gift. I really appreciate it. Been using it every day. Just signed my life away. <laughs> I signed the lease on the truck. Ah. There it is. Oh my. Whew. It's real. It is, it is real, it is go time. I bought a truck. So I'm guessing uh, taking possession of it next week. We still got to determine what day because there's a bunch of work being done to the truck yet. There's being, there's new transmission fluid going in, new diff fluid, uh, new clutch, a new bumper on the front. Uh, he's getting it polished. I think that's been done already. It's looking great. Uh, but, but, but what else is getting done? There's a few other things that are getting done before I, before I take it as conditions of the sale. And... Uh, they said it takes about a, a week for the financing to all go through, like for the funds to be transferred, because banks are slow. So what is this, Thursday today? So by next Thursday, hopefully the funds will have gone through and been released. That means on Friday or Saturday, I should be able to pick it up next week. Whew. A mixture of excitement and anxiety. It's a weird feeling. Sometimes it's more anxiety, and then the excitement pulls me back over to that side. And then the anxiety pulls me back over this way. And then, whew, like I was saying the other day, buying a truck is uh, is a bit of a gamble. Uh, you could make a lot of money, or you could lose a lot of money. But hopefully we'll be like somewhere right in the middle, and we'll just make some good money. Who am I kidding? Let's hope, let, let's go for, let's go big. Let's hope we make a lot of money. The truck seems to be really good. It's had immaculate care and maintenance. I trust the guy who's selling it. And uh, I trust the, the people here who have been doing the maintenance on it. All the maintenance history on the truck over the last like, six years is available. Uh, every single fuel up, uh, the old the driver took, uh, wrote it down neatly and recorded fuel mileage. Every single piece of maintenance uh, had all the paperwork ready to show the, the rebuild. The engine's been rebuilt. Uh, 600,000 kilometers ago complete in frame uh, so that was uh, what 600,000 kilometers that's what 300 600,000 kilometers is about 380,000 miles uh, is what's on that brand new engine well, brand new in frame so uh, I'm feeling good I'm feeling confident about the truck I feel good I made a good decision I feel it's just now, now the 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 reality sets in, and I've got to pay for this truck. Cause contrary to popular belief, I didn't have the entire funds for the entire truck just sitting in a bank account and just paid in cash. Wouldn't that be awesome? No, no, I had to get the help of some financiers, so uh, I got to pay them back. I hate debt. I'm not opposed to debt because debt is necessary to gain the capital needed to invest and make more money. You need money to make money. So sometimes debt is necessary to make money. The point now is that I have to pay that debt back. I have to, I have to get that down to zero. We've gotten our credit cards down to zero almost completely now. We've gotten a lot of our other debt down to zero. Uh, we're doing good, we're in a good spot. 
and I'm confident with the industry where we're at right now. I know fuel is high, but I also know that the rates are high as well. Uh, I know that it's a crazy, crazy time to be getting into this, but I don't know how to explain this. I'm following my gut. I have a good gut feeling about this. This is going to be good. I don't know how you guys feel about gut feelings and stuff, but I always say follow your gut. Like most times it's telling you to do something for a reason and uh, I'm nervous. I'm not going to be I'm not going to beat around the bush with you guys. I'm nervous about buying a truck, especially in this time. Paid more for it than I than I wanted to, that's for sure. This market is crazy right now. Not too sure what's going to happen. Flying by the seat of my pants just a little bit. But I've also, it's, it's like an educated guess, what I've been doing. An educated estimate, an educated gamble. I've looked into it and I think this is going to be good. I think this is going to be good. I can't wait to show you guys the truck. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, it's going to look so good in the shop. It's going to look so good in there. I'm excited. I'm excited. So there's no going back from it now. You know, we haven't heard Britt's opinion on this truck yet. What I'm do you think? I'm excited for you. Are you excited? Are you okay with this? Are you in diesel? Yeah, as long as you don't go long haul again. Regional's fine. Long haul? Uh-uh. Hmm? No. No dice. So I did clear it with her before I went and bought it. Numerous it is, times. Numerous times, yeah. I wanted to make sure that she was going to be okay, because I know that once we sign this, uh, I'm locked in now. It's a 42 month term <laughs> and then uh, at the end there's a little buyout yet and then it's all mine uh, But it's pretty much yeah in 42 months. That's when all of this uh, the financing will be complete. So for that amount of time I'm gonna be uh, Stuck doing what I'm doing unless if I were to sell it But I really don't want to sell this truck. This is a truck I've always wanted and I want to keep uh, I want to actually rebuild it from the ground up and make it a new old truck So regional it is um I'm going to be jumping onto our regional open deck division with it, and uh, we'll be starting hopefully June 1st. So that's coming up quick. Got about a week until then, so I got about, well it's a long weekend this weekend. So I got Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, no, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of work yet. And uh, so I'm just waiting to take possession of it. The truck is being safetyed, and uh, like I said, a bunch of other work being done to it quickly first uh, on condition of sale. And from what I understand, it's all mostly done already. We're just waiting for maybe the clutch uh, to get finished and the new bumper to go on the front. And then uh, we can arrange possession. That should be uh, probably late this week, I'm thinking. But. And new couches. Every time I turn around in here, I'm just like, wow. <laughs> yeah, we went big. We were just waiting for our income tax uh, from this year to come through. And I'd put away a lot of money. Uh from uh for taxes and uh, it turns out we had a little bit of a, a return yet and so we used all of that cash and uh we got our ivf on the way there's uh, another well we could probably do an update on that soon in the next couple of days just uh, there's one more procedure she's got to go through yet and then that's on the road and i won't be far away from home i'm not going too far i'm not going long haul over the road uh, but uh overnights I guess overnights, maybe two nights at a time, three nights. I don't know what they're going to do. But I'll be home on the weekends. How do you like your chair? It's very comfortable. It looks comfortable. Oh, it is. That's hers, and that one's mine. They're both pretty much exactly the same, except uh, that one's attached to the couch. And this one rocks. It's for when we have the baby. She's got a rocking chair. The baby. That doesn't even exist yet, but... We've, we'll get there. We have planned our whole lives around it yet, so. Or already. We've planned our lives around it already. Him or her. For now, I'll just swaddle Wiener. Swaddle him. Rock him. Practice. <laughs> He'd love it. He's very upset that he's not allowed on the coaches. I do put him on my lap, but he's not allowed to even touch the edges. Spoiled. Diesel, you could sit on my lap too, but you're not allowed to touch the couch at all. You have to sit completely on my lap. He doesn't look impressed. Well, don't, don't, don't act too impressed, man. 
All right, guys. Well, we'll uh, talk to you in tomorrow's video. We'll see you later.